Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about the Indian postal system. And even though that may seem like a very mundane topic, um, it's become a pretty comedic experience for me um, and definitely a learning curve in terms of what expectations I can have and what I just can't allow myself to get frustrated about anymore because really it's out of my control and it seems to be kind of just hit or miss whether or not things um, make it to where they need to go. And so whether you're looking to send something to or from India or you just want something to laugh about, I hope that this video meets those expectations. So first thing that you need to know about the Indian Postal System is that there aren't really house numbers. Instead of saying like a number on a street of where you are, people just name a landmark that the postal man will know and then they just say in relation to that where they are. So even on places like Amazon or anywhere that you order online, they have a line in the address bar, like similar to where we would put an apartment number or like a street um, name. They just have a line named landmark and there's like commonly accepted landmarks that you know for your area. So a lot of times people will list temples or really well-known hotels or a fountain or an institute or such and then you'll name where you are in relation to that. So for instance here, even in my college, my department of bioengineering is listed as opposite from the police station and near the rehabilitation institute. To me it kind of seems funny but it works and so rather than instituting a very western idea of house numbers they just continue to rely on the postal man understanding the area which I would assume could be very overwhelming if someone is new to the area and wants to be the postman so I wonder if there's like a quiz like where's the water tower or where's this hotel or where's the swimming pool because they would be pretty pretty ineffective if they didn't know those things so next thing is the fact that when I arrived I had this very idyllic idea that I was going to send letters home to my friends and family and that we would kind of have this snail mail correspondence so about every month I was hoping to get to write my family home and I sent it by like the cheapest way of Indian mail which is about 50 rupees so 75 cents a letter that they were saying was going to be able to reach it all the way home and that it should arrive in two to three weeks, they were saying. So after two weeks, when none of the four letters I had sent home had arrived, I asked one of my friends from the UK, who has been here for about 20 years, you know, I said, have you ever tried to send anything home? What has your experience been? And she said, oh yeah, the first week I was here, I sent 10 postcards home, and to this day, none of them have made it home 10 years later. So that got me pretty disheartened, and while one of my four got home, I just don't have any faith in that mode of sending things anymore. So there's two other options besides that least expensive way of sending things. You also have something called registered post, meaning you can pay about 100 extra rupees and they'll slap a barcode on it, and basically you'll be able to track where it goes. But from my experience, once it has left my local area, I never saw when it landed in the US or when it landed in um, the town I was sending. So. It seemed kind of haphazard, and the only thing that um, did work about it was the fact that when it says registered post, that means the person has to sign for it on the other end. So you get a notification when the person does receive it, which is nice. And finally, there's something called fast post or expedited post, and basically that's meant to guarantee that whatever you're sending will get there within 10 to 14 days, but I sent one package through that mode and it still took three weeks to get there so although it was successful and it did make it I had to pay a lot more money and it took longer than they said it was going to anyways so two adjectives I would use to describe the postal system are apathetic and unreliable as mean as that sounds <laughs> So the next experience with the postal system has been the fact that they have Amazon here in, in India. So, and it's been pretty reliable. I didn't buy Prime. And everything that I bought without Prime has still made it to me. It's taken anywhere from a week to 14 days to get to me. But the reason that I want to bring it up is just because of how hilarious the packaging is when it arrives. As you can see it's been pretty well smashed and actually it was opened 
um, like they cut a hole in it and then just taped a whole bunch of tape around it. And it was a pretty heavy package, so maybe they were checking to see if it was bomb or something. The packaging that stuff arrives in is just like really hilarious. It has Amazon tape on it, but it's just so beat up when it arrives. I just, I don't want to know what goes on inside of <laughs> the post offices here in India. It just looks like they've drop kicked everything and then put it in a drying machine for fun and just let it tumble around. I don't know if they just don't care or if people are just don't complain enough or don't have high enough expectation. That and then the final thing is um, this idea that you can get a courier service to send things to or from India. So similar to the US how you have um, UPS, FedEx, or DHL, you can do the same things coming um, from India. But my experience has been that while receiving something via these courier services, you have to pay a hefty import fee. So I purchased something from the US, uh, um, a piece of clothing for $35, and the company was willing to ship it internationally for free. So I said, yeah, okay, why not? Um, I could wait until I'm home in the US, but if they're willing to ship it, great. In hindsight, neither they nor I knew what it was going to take um, to get it here via courier. India imposes a tax, an import tax, on anything that's coming via registered post. So that includes DHL, UPS, or FedEx. And when it arrives, they basically open it up and they evaluate what's on the inside. And after that, they slap a hefty, hefty import tax on the on the package and not only that but they have to have confirmation that whoever it's going to is like a registered Indian citizen or that you have like a visa to stay here or like a confirmed address so but that being said they didn't notify me to do that until about 10 days after it had been detained and I looked up the tracking information and it just showed a scan every morning they had scanned it in and it was just sitting there and I didn't know what to do. I tried calling them, no one would pick up. And eventually I sent an email to the company who had sent my package and they sent an email saying, this is who it's going to, here's her information, you know, get information from her. So finally, once we were made aware of how I was supposed to upload these documents, um, at that point it arrived, but again, it had that really hefty import fee on it. Um, in another case, my mom sent me a birthday package for, she claimed that the contents were about $3. And when it arrived, I had a 700 rupee import tax on it. So $10 import tax to receive my own birthday package. So um, that being said, if you send something, send something by USPS, I mean, even if you get some tracking on it, for some reason, um, anything sent by USPS is not taxed. Um, and although that may seem like a less reliable way of receiving things, it definitely has been a less expensive way of getting packages from the US. So anyways, I hope some of my stories gave you a couple of laughs and was informative if that's what you were looking for. If you have any other questions about anything that I have learned about this postal system, um, yeah, just let me know. So other than that, I'll see you guys next week. All right, bye.